Hey guys, my name is Francisco Hernandez, and today I want to talk about ND filters, which stands for Neutral Density Filters. In case you don't know what they are, you can basically think of them as sunglasses for your lenses. I actually made a video going over why I use ND filters, and you can check out that video using the link in the top right corner of the screen or in the description area below. But basically, it boils down to there being a power loss in high-speed sync and me using ND filters to achieve the same results without experiencing that loss in power. The ND filter allows me to do the same job a higher shutter speed would do in high-speed sync, which is lowering the ambient, but without experiencing that loss in power, which again happens in high-speed sync. In this video, I want to finally formally introduce you guys to an absolute game-changing ND filter that I've been using for about two years now. And I don't really like that description, game-changing, but it honestly perfectly describes how my equipment and way of shooting has changed in these past two years. Instead of using the Godox 8600 Pro or even the 400 Pro in high-speed sync, I can now use the much smaller Godox 8300 Pro with an ND filter to get the exact same results, but in a much smaller package. This is gonna make fitting the lights into my camera bag much nicer and also makes traveling with the light much easier. There have been ND filters for decades already, so they're not new or anything. However, the type of ND filter that I'm gonna be talking about in today's video is still relatively new because while usually ND filters go over the lens, this new type of filter goes directly over the camera's sensor. I know that might seem scary to some of you guys out there and that's totally understandable. So at the end of the video, I will give you guys some normal over the lens ND filter recommendations as well. The specific ND filter that I wanted to highlight in today's video is by a company called STC Optics and it's my absolute go-to ND filter. Rob Hall made a video about this filter two years ago back when we shot together here in my hometown of South Texas. And it's because of him that I started using this filter myself. So of course, big props to Rob for introducing me to this filter. The reason why this ND filter was so interesting to me was because it solved all the different issues that I had with normal ND filters. And it's because of those issues that I never even used an ND filter for many years, maybe even as far as back as 2014. Having used ND filters in the past, I knew from personal experience that if I wanted to use a lens hood with the ND filter attached, that I more than likely wouldn't even be able to use it. It just wouldn't fit with the ND filter attached. And because I wouldn't be able to use the lens hood, that I would risk a lot of lower contrast in my photos if the sun was anywhere near the front of my lens. I also knew that if I wanted to use an ND filter of a certain size, like 82 millimeters with my Sigma Art 35 f1.2, and then switch to another lens like the Sigma Art 105 f1.4, which is 105 millimeters, that I would either need to use an adapter, what's known as step up or step down rings to adapt one size filter to the other, or I would need to buy the same filter for both of those lenses, which actually was not even an option for the Sigma Art 105 1.4. There were no ND filters for that lens back in 2019 when I was first introduced to the SDC Optics sensor ND filter. And even if it had been an option back then, buying two filters is obviously gonna cost more than one, but since it wasn't even an option, using the STC Optics ND filter was the only way that I could use any ND filter with that Sigma Art 105 1.4. With this new type of sensor ND filter, I was able to use any lens that I wanted, which was extremely convenient, and I could finally use a lens hood, which helps avoid lowering the contrast when I face any sort of sun to the front of the lens, which of course is an issue with using normal ND filters. Attaching the ND filter and taking it off is so easy, which of course is a huge plus. And it's so easy that I wanted to show you guys me installing the ND filter right now. I personally attached the filter using one hand many times, but of course you would want to use two hands if you can. You just place the filter like this and then lay it down before giving it a little push on the top and then it'll gently snap into place. That specific ND filter is the six stop ND filter for the Sony a7R 3 so that's how you would install that one. But I believe STC Optics has made a lot of different other filters and even newer updated versions of these filters. So if you intend to use any of their filters, make sure to check out their YouTube channel so you can check out how to install the ND filter to your camera. When it comes to focusing speeds or visibility, the STC Optics has pretty much no effect on both of those aspects if you're using mirrorless cameras. If you intend to use a DSLR, just know that it will be difficult to use the filter, but it's still possible and using live view should help with a DSLR. Back when I used to shoot with my Canon 60, I used to use a three stop Tiffin ND filter with a 70-200 f2.8 lens. And I vividly remember having trouble focusing and just seeing the subject's expression. With mirrorless, it's really a non-issue because the EVF that you're looking through brightens up so much that it's if you're shooting normally without the ND filter attached. What you're seeing on the screen right now is just a quick example of how the camera focused without the filter versus how it focused with the filter attached. 
even if you have no issues whatsoever taking a shot with the filter, you should still wonder if the filter is going to be degrading the image quality of your photos. And thankfully, I can tell you that the STC Optics ND filter will not do that. For my own testing with the six stop ND filter, the only difference that I noticed was a tiny little bit of magenta, about plus five in Lightroom and a minus 50 Kelvin shift in the temperature. But when it came to sharpness, my images stayed tack sharp. I'll leave links to photos taken with the ND filter so you guys can check out the image quality for yourself. When it comes to the accuracy of the six stop ND filter, I actually found it to be a little bit darker than six stops. So even though it is rated to be six stops of ND, it's actually about six and one third stops. The best time to use an ND filter is anytime that you need to lower the amount of ambient light in your shot for various reasons like long exposures with landscapes or how I use the ND filter with bright sun using wide apertures with your off-camera flash. It would not make sense to use an ND filter at night, for example, when you're more than likely needing to increase the amount of ambient light in your shots rather than decrease it. If you intend to use the filters like I do and use lenses that open up to f1.4, then six stops should be perfect. But if you use lenses that open up to f2.8, then four stops should be perfect. And if you intend to use lenses that only open up to f4, then three stops of ND should be perfect. If you guys are curious what filter strength you should get, then let me know in the comment section below and I'll help you out as soon as possible. One of the biggest reasons why I can see photographers who don't even shoot portraits to use a sensor filter is the ability to use any filter at all because if you didn't know there's certain lenses out there some like wide angle lenses that have bulbous front elements that prevent you from using a normal ND filter that goes over the front of the lens. STC Optics offers a lot of different filters out there so in case you guys are interested in something like astrophotography they have filters for that but there's a lot of different other filters out there that I don't really know a lot about. So in case you want to use any sort of other filters, you might as well just go to their website and check out all the filters that they offer. By now, you're probably wondering what the price of these filters are. And thankfully, it's nothing too crazy at only $100 for each of the filters, the three, four, and six stop ND filters. And in case you wanna buy a pack of three, like three, four, and six stop, for example, then you can actually save about $10. Unfortunately, the shipping cost is a little bit high at $30 to $35, depending on where you live. But honestly, from using the filters for so long, I can tell you that I would have paid so much more for these filters because it honestly made my way of shooting so much easier. If you would rather prefer using normal over the lens type of ND filters, then I would highly recommend the Freewell two to five stop variable ND filter and their six to nine stop variable ND filter. I'm actually making a review on those filters next month, but for now I can tell you that they work really, really great. You can find those filters for $109 each and I'll leave links to them in the description area below. And I'll also leave links to the STC Optics Sensor ND filter and the alternative sensor ND filter to the STC Optics by a company called Case. Right now I'm actually making a video comparing the STC Optics versus the Case sensor ND filter. So be sure to subscribe to the channel to see it once it's out. Normally at this point, I would end the video with some new behind the scenes footage from a shoot using whatever product I was talking about in the video. But I actually have a lot of different shoots that I've done using the sensor ND filter on my channel already. So in this case, I'll end the video with some of my favorite photo shoots that I did using the filter. I really hope this video helped you guys out. And if it did, be sure to give it a like and also subscribe to the channel if you're new here. I have a lot of different content coming up. So for now, I'll just say take care and I'll see you guys in the very next video.